Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with a warm-up story about an annoying employee. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. And our first story. No, no, no. At my job, I work with about 30 people, all in a room of cubicles. It's a small office, so if you're talking to your cubicle neighbor, there's a good chance Jane and Bob on the other side can hear your entire conversation. Most days, everyone is cordial and keep their talking volume low. Most of us wear headphones to blank out the monotony of data entry. One woman in the middle of the office thinks she's the next Whitney or maybe Reba, possibly a Christina, whatever it is. She thinks everyone appreciates her random singing, or worse, off-key humming. She's been asked to lower her voice, be aware of the people around her, and told to keep quiet, especially if I can hear you over my noise-canceling headphones. She's been reported to the boss, yet we're still subjected to a daily concert of tone-deaf singing. Today, I decided that if she was going to sing or hum, I would repeatedly say no until she stopped. The first time took about three minutes of me saying no, no, nope, nuh-uh, no way, no. I gradually increased my displeasure until she stopped. After the third time, she would start and I would know her right away. It got to where she would barely get a sound out before I started my no. My neighbors that knew what was going on were trying not to break out laughing. I was able to have an enjoyable day at work listening to my music without any horrible bellowing. I can't believe she still kept trying. I would have died of embarrassment after the first vicious no. Good on you. And our second story. Waste three weeks of my life and want legal fees? You got it. I believe in showing up for jury duty. I believe that it's important for everyone to serve if they can because trial by jury is one of the bedrock principles of civilized society. It's a duty everyone should do at least once. I don't have a problem with being on a jury. I do have a problem with plaintiffs and lawyers who waste the jury's time. I was on the jury for a civil case. While a civil case is less likely to expose you to gruesome crime scene photos you can never unsee, it will very likely devour weeks of your life, especially if the people involved have more money than sense. That was the case with my trial. Two rich idiots and former business partners were suing each other over a contract dispute that could have been settled in an afternoon. Idiot A was owed $300,000 over a land deal, and Idiot B wouldn't pay. Idiot B wasn't paying because he accused Idiot A of misuse of business funds and all sorts of sleazy behavior. Both of them wanted the other guy to fork over lots of money and damages, and the trial lasted three weeks as their lawyers drug everything out trying to play on the jury's sympathies. This included one tearful witness who had to frequently pause because she was just so, so upset. The jury stopped being sympathetic in the first week. You can imagine how we felt towards them after having spent two more weeks listening to these morons argue. I was especially annoyed because not only did this take up the entirety of a beautiful two weeks off I'd expected to spend relaxing, it then bled into what was supposed to be my first week back at work. Again, this could have been settled in an afternoon. However, the reason for this excessive court time became clear at the end of the trial when each side's lawyers began making the case for the money they felt they deserved. Each side tried to play on our sympathies for damages, money paid out in addition to the actual amount contested. Finally, the lawyers made the case for the awarding of the lawyers' fees. Basically, how it works is that if certain conditions are met, one side can ask the other side to foot the legal bill. If I sue you and it's established that I had a good enough reason to sue, you can be on the hook for my legal fees. That's what both sides were trying to do, and that's when it became clear why three weeks of my life was wasted. This whole trial was an attempt to justify the awarding of massive legal fees. Idiot A, who was suing for $300,000, owed over $1.2 million in legal costs. So even if he won, he was still out $900,000. Idiot B's legal costs were about $700,000, again far exceeding the money he owed Idiot A. That's why neither side settled. They owed too much money to their lawyers and were gambling that the jury would see it their way and make the other guy pay those bills. This is where the malicious compliance came into play. As a jury member, I took my oath seriously and made sure I followed the rules. We all did. 
so when we analyzed the case, we made sure to be as fair as possible. For instance, it became clear that while Idiot A was a sleazy idiot, he indeed had a contract that stipulated that Idiot B should have paid him $300,000. So we ruled that Idiot A was owed $300,000. However, we also decided that this was all he was owed. We awarded no damages whatsoever because it was also clear that he was a sleazy idiot and had been abusing his position. For Idiot B, since he should have paid Idiot A, we awarded no damages, despite it being clear that Idiot A was indeed sleazy. Contract says pay, you pay, and don't be an idiot. Now, we the jury determined that both sides did do just enough wrong to establish that they were entitled to those legal fees. They met the legal requirements, so we discussed the legal fees they were owed. So we decided that yes, each side would be awarded legal fees. In fact, they would be awarded the same exact amount, $400,000. But since both sides were awarded that amount, it really meant that they got nothing and were thus responsible for paying their own legal fees. I have to admit, I enjoyed the reading of the verdict. So there you have it. Idiot A got his $300,000 but owed $1.2 million in legal fees. Idiot B not only had to fork over the $300K, he also had to pay an additional $700K in legal fees. Like I said, people with more money than sense, except in the end, they had less money. So in other words, the attorneys that wasted your time arguing were the only people in the courtroom that made money. Sounds about right. And our last story. Ex-boss assaulted me and invokes the wrath of my friend. I spent two years working for a particular boss who I'll call Dan. Dan was, and almost certainly still is, the most unacceptable human being I've ever had the displeasure of encountering. He was a compulsive liar, a narcissist, short-tempered, unethical, unreasonable, unintelligent, and abusive. I once witnessed him spend half an hour shouting at a salesman for wearing shoes that Dan didn't approve of. Not inappropriate shoes, mind you, but just ones that Dan didn't like. The salesman in question could have gone home and changed his shoes in the time that Dan spent cursing him out and belittling him. He also sold a client secondhand computers, claiming they were new and priced as new ones. This man not only assaulted me, but verbally and emotionally abused me for the better part of two years, and did everything in his power to keep me under his thumb. He constantly micromanaged me to the point of just dictating to me what I should write in an email to a client. If it wasn't done exactly his way, it wasn't correct. I had to argue with him just to get a GD sick day, even though I'm legally entitled to it. I was woefully underpaid and on call 24-7. This made it difficult for me to find other employment and is one of the reasons I stayed as long as I did. He made my life absolutely miserable and I developed a bit of a drinking problem as a result. I recently watched a presentation on domestic violence and his behavior is a textbook case of what DV abusers do. I could go on and on about the things that this man did to be the biggest a-hole he could be, but this is pro-revenge, not bad bosses, so I'll get to the story. One day, Dan and I had a disagreement about something. I was right, and I had the emails to prove it, and I was frankly fed up with all his bullcrap. I told him I wouldn't be going to work because I was taking a sick day. He proceeded to shove me down to the ground. He's a big guy, probably one of the reasons he's gotten away with being such the human garbage he is for so long, and starts trying to strangle me. I was able to fend him off and escape, and after I did, I filed a police report. There were no witnesses, so that was going to go nowhere. He actually had one of his other subordinates make a claim that the alleged assault didn't happen, said subordinate wasn't there at the time, so false report. I naturally told everyone I knew and all of his clients that contacted me afterwards, I was their primary IT support, so quite a few of them had my personal number, that I had filed a police report against him for assault. I specifically said it that way because unlike simply claiming that he assaulted me, Telling people I filed a report was unarguably true and not slanderous. A lot of his clients were already not happy with the services he provided, internet and PBX, so that certainly turned a lot of them off of renewing their contracts. A very close family friend of mine, Carol, was naturally one of the first to hear about the assault. I left the country about a month later in search of better opportunities, but my friend remained and became the chairman of the board of trustees for the body corporate of the neighborhood where Dan lived. A body corporate is basically like an HOA, but with different laws governing them. She set her sights on making his life hell. Dan had a broken down car. That had been broken down for over a year at that point. He never had the money to fix it because he's a crappy businessman 
who never seemed to realize that his business model had really tiny profit margins and the rules of the neighborhood were changed to force broken down cars to be towed away. If the owner didn't tow it, the body corporate would and charge the owner and fine them. So Dan was fined a few times, not small amounts either, and when he was fined, he did what he always does when things don't go his way, throw a effing tantrum while having no leg to stand on. The tantrum in this case was several expletive-filled emails to the body corporate, which is just a great way to endear yourself to someone who already hates you, which got him fined again for breaking the conduct code. This, combined with the loss of revenue for his business, has led to him not having any substantial income for over half a year now. He has no car, nor the money to buy one, several of his big clients are definitely not going to renew contracts with him, and he appears to no longer have any staff in his employ. Nobody's seen anyone coming to his house in months now, and the body corporate is pressuring his landlord to evict him. He's well and truly effed. I'm living happily in another country now and got an awesome job that pays 20 times what working for him did. Yes, really, 20 times more money. That's how little I made under him. That was awesome how your friend shut this jerk down. He deserved every bit of it. Hope your life gets better knowing that you're away from him forever. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.